you know what? I'm going to do something on this podcast that I actually talked with my best friend today about. We're both, we grew up longtime Knicks fans. So I'm, we're going to go to the 1993 Eastern Conference Finals. And I, Lance, if you're watching the video of this, you'll see Lance is smiling already because he knows. And Lance and I have had this conversation years ago in my car in which I told him that in Game 5 of the 93 Eastern Conference Finals, I thought Charles Smith got fouled. Okay? And I held on to that. I held on to that anger for a long time. Long time I thought he got fou- fouled. To the point, I've met Charles Smith, who's a University of Pittsburgh alum, and I wasn't too thrilled about meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Watching that, I have to say, it's good defense, man. It's good defense. <laughs> Wow. It's good defense. Wow. We're going to have to just have an entire podcast for that. (laughs) Forget the rest of the show. I didn't know that was going to happen. That Charles Smith was not fouled? Yeah. He's seen the light. 27 years after the fact, Dex has finally finally seen the light. Wow. You know know what makes me upset about it more is that he should have went up stronger. And if if I'm being objective about it as a basketball fan, I watched it. And the strip... Uh, by Jordan on the second attempt, and then he goes over to the the left side of the basket and goes up. And I really, I used to think the third attempt was definitely a foul. I argued that for the longest time. Pippen gets a really good amount of the ball. I don't think there was enough body. I can understand why the refs didn't call it there. And looking back objectively and not being salty about it as it was for so many years, I looked at it last night. I ran it. I watched it. I tortured myself. And I watched the play three times. And I was like, you know what? That was some good defense. That was some <laughs> – I got to give it up. That was some good defense. There you go. Now, wow. now did, did we did we catch a break the next year with uh, Hugh Holland swallowing the whistle with Hubert Davis? Hey, okay. Yeah, that, you know, I know that I know that happened too. See, Lance, we can evolve. I'm not talking to you like the when I, when I was 24. I, I, I've grown a little bit. <laughs> I've grown a little bit. Now, yeah. Brian, so you know, yes. it does not mean that when I'm watching this part, six part, and I knew where they were going with this, And I will say, I like that the documentary gave the Knicks their due as a challenger, right? As the biggest competition to the Bulls at that time. And Jordan even respected them. But then Jordan Jordan had to hurt me with one quote. I'm going to let Lance talk after this quote. Jordan said, at our best, even when they were at their best, talking they being the Knicks, we still knew we we were the better team. And I was like, that hurts, but it's true. It hurts because it's true. It hurts because even when the Knicks were at their best, 60 wins that year in 1993, up 2-0 in the conference finals, Brian, I thought we were going to the finals. If Lance knew me then, he didn't know me then, but if Lance knew me then at 10, 11 years old, I thought we were going to the finals. I saw Nick fans tweeting out that they really thought they were going to win oh, that series. Oh, we did. All of I us did. That. All yeah. of us did. All of us thought we were going to win that series. And I can't it, even imagine that. <laughs> Watching they it didn't is- learn their lesson. That's the problem. <laughs> they were, but the Knicks, wait, to be clear, though, the Knicks were a number one seed, right, that they year? Were, and were they, they a 60-win 60 60 team? 60 wins. And the yeah. Bulls were, like, second, third seed or something like that? Yep. Yep. Wow. And, and, and the, the Knicks won the first two games. And the game that really has to bother you if you're the Knicks fan is in game five. See, if you've matured as a Knicks fan, the game that should bother you is game three. Mm. Jordan still shot, I think, really badly in the game. I can't remember yeah, exactly which. Three of eighteen. Three of eighteen. Game. Three of eighteen. Mm. Lance, you would remember. Three of eighteen in that game, and the Knicks wow. still lost. If they had wow. won Game Three, they take the series by control. They probably don't lose a Game Five in Madison Square Garden, but that's what it wrote. How was it for you rewatching that, Lance? Did were you smiling at the TV? Were you like me, rewinding the plays of Charles Smith? Uh, what were you doing during that moment? It was lovely. I was once again on top <laughs> nine. Nothing makes me feel better about myself than watching Nick fans be miserable. <laughs> in okay, let me get it out here. Let me throw out one of my favorite statistics. I know this is going to kill Dex, but I'm still going to say it. Oh, mm-hmm. Lord. The Bulls with MJ. With MJ. Okay, that's the key operating phrase. Face the Knicks five times between the late 80s and the 90s. Yep. And you know how many times the Knicks won a series? Zip. Zero. Zip okay? <laughs> Zero. Five and oh, the Bulls went against the Knicks. The only time the Knicks won, of course, is what Dex was referring to. The following year, Jordan retires, and they went into the semis, not the Eastern Conference Finals. A lot of people keep throwing out the Knicks played the Bulls in the Eastern Conference no. Finals. They didn't. The Knicks then played the Pacers in the Eastern Conference Beat Finals. Seven. That's when Ewing is running around the garden, high-fiving everybody in the front row. When they Great, moment. The Great moment. Great moment. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Well, 
<laughs> also a short-lived moment because he certainly wasn't high-fiving anybody in Game 7 against the Houston Rockets. Th- thanks, but man. <laughs> we'll save that for another podcast. Anyway, getting back to my point here. So that was the only time the Knicks won, and that was because of the Hubert Davis, Scottie Pippen, Phantom foul. So Jordan and the Bulls, was it hard-fought series after series? Absolutely. But Jordan had the Knicks number. And the stats and the visual evidence shows that. So what was I feeling last night watching that? Certainly very fond memories. I also like the fact that they brought up the 1998 All-Star game, which was at mm, the bar. Yep. That's mm-hmm. how the episode started. I actually was at that game. So it was one of my greatest memories. And also the second greatest memory, which has not been brought up yet, We'll probably get to that in a later episode. Is of course Jordan's double nickel at the Garden, which was also. I forgot you told me you. I forgot you told me you were there. I watched that last week. I watched. My brother made me watch it last week. I still get. I I still get mad (laughs) about. I still get mad about that pass to Wennington to win that game. I still get mad about it. It was a great pass, though. Like he's killing us the whole game, and then he kills us with the assist. Oh, I remember going to school the next day. That, see, see, look, look, and look at Lance. Look at Lance. He's smiling. He's reveling in the past, the pain that was caused to Dexter Henry. But see, on this podcast, the listeners, the viewers, they saw maturity. They saw a man <laughs> admit. They see you growing up. Growing up. Or hearing you grow up, too, which That's is right. just fantastic. I don't yeah. have to, you know what, you know what, Lance? I'm no longer angry. I'm no longer angry. Oh, do the Knicks still disappoint me? <laughs> yeah. But I'm not angry about it. Like, they're not going to mess up my day anymore. So that's it. See, this, this podcast should be renamed The Evolution of Dex Henry. <laughs> <laughs> because it's when Dex finally came to the realization that Charles Smith was not fouled and the Bulls just have a really good defense and they put him in his place. So, you know, this is really a tremendous moment for myself to take in. I didn't know that I was going to have the honor of hearing you <laughs> come forth with me as well as the rest of the audience. Yeah. It's a special moment. No, you know what? You know what? I mean, years ago, that was not the same energy I had for Lance. And Brian Brian knows I'm a, I'm a I won't say a disgruntled Nick fan. I, I've let a lot of that anger go. Um, but Brian, I mean, no, Bri- Brian, you know where I am even as a Nick fan. So I, I yeah, just, you're, you're kind of just resigned to the fact that they are who they are and yeah. you're just willing to live with the results at this point. Yeah, like, wow. yes, you're, you're optimistic about Mitchell Robinson and RJ Barrett, but at the same time, you don't expect too much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm.